Very disturbing. Joining me right now to react is retired neurosurgeon. He is the former secretary of HUD. Dr. Ben Carson is here. He is the founder and chairman of the American Cornerstone Institute, which is about to roll out a new online learning course for kids in grades K through fifth grade about our country's history and values. Dr. Carson, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Thank you, Maria. Thanks for having me. And I have yeah. to say, uh, Congressman Jackson voices the concerns that many of us have and have had uh, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like a ship out at sea during a storm with a captain who's impaired and people trying to tell him what to do, but he's not able to comprehend what they're saying. It leaves us in very grave danger. Things like uh, leaving our, our southern border completely open and not understanding the implications of that when you have nations like Iran, who sees us as the great Satan, wants to destroy us. Why wouldn't they be taking advantage of that situation to send their operatives in through the open southern border, targeting our electric grid, creating enormous problems for us? And we don't seem to have a kind of leadership that recognizes that it is a problem. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned Iran, because that is what I'm looking at. We are all watching Joe Biden on the world stage, but our adversaries are watching even closer. I mean, uh, President Biden has been vaccinated twice. He's been boosted twice. Um, he's telling everybody else to get the vaccines and boosts, and, and yet he's still got COVID. We know what kind of a yeah. year and a half he's had. What is the risk of a serious illness, given his age and his medical history? And is the White House downplaying this? Well, there's no question, you know, he's in that age range that puts him at an increased risk. And he has underlying problems as well. So uh, it is a serious issue. The good thing, of course, is he has access to the best medical care uh, in the world uh, at Walter Reed. So I suspect he will get through it, but I hope and pray, like many others, that he will recover from that. But that still leaves the, the problems with his ability to communicate appropriately, uh, not to make gaffes, and to create confidence. One of the things a leader is supposed to do is to create confidence in those who are following him. And we have exactly the opposite of that. And he's a laughing stock around the world. This is not good for America. And, uh, you know, it's time for us to pray. We, we got to get through this period of time and hopefully get back to uh, some stability in our country and leadership for the world. Last week, Biden actually discussed that he had two brain aneurysms. We knew this before the president, before the election, actually. But his doctor stopped his heart medications, uh, despite the fact that he doing so elevates the risk of dangerous blood clots. We just saw a statement from the White House uh, potentially downplaying this. But we know that he's on uh, Paxlovid. This is the antiviral the president is taking right now for COVID. What can you tell us about that in terms of how effective it is? And any side effects? Does everybody who tests positive for COVID need that drug, Paxlovid? Well, it's, a, it's an antiviral. Uh, Pfizer uh, came up with a uh, protease inhibitor. Keep, keeps the virus in the early stages from being able to replicate, to uh, reduplicate itself rapidly. So it is very useful, particularly in older people who may have a propensity to need hospitalization. Uh, now, it does have some potential side effects. Uh, it can affect uh, the liver and other parts of the uh, body and the immune system in a negative way as well. And about 1% of the people who take it will have a rebound phenomenon. But for the most part, it's good. And I, I use that as a segue to say that there are a number of treatments. We've learned a lot of things about COVID since the beginning and have the ability to treat it to a much greater extent. And therefore, uh, if it begins to multiply again amongst our population, uh, the degree of fright and, uh, and hysteria should be significantly diminished. Well, I mean, I, I, we have a statement from the Stanford University study that I want to ask you about, because you were the director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins at the age of 33, became the youngest chief of pediatric neurosurgery 
in America. How does COVID affect the brain and nervous system? The Stanford University study finds similarities between COVID brain fog and chemo brain fog in that both damage the same brain cells and processes. How prevalent is this? How long does it typically, typically take to recover? Because this is one of the issues that we have been watching the president on the world stage making these mistakes. People are wondering if there is uh, a dementia issue, a, a, a brain uh, issue here. Well, it seems like he already has brain fog, so I don't know that it's going to get much worse. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, COVID itself can affect the clotting system. It can cause a hyper uh, response for the immune system. It can affect the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels uh, that create a barrier, something called a blood-brain barrier, so that now things that didn't have access to the brain do have access to the brain. Uh, those are the kinds of things that uh, impact the cognition. And uh, there are some uh, rumblings that perhaps people with COVID also suffer from post-traumatic stress dis disorder. And that can affect portions of the limbic system, uh, the amygdala, the memory bodies, that can affect the memory, the emotions, all of those things, all of which obviously needs much further uh, investigation and study. But let's not get to a point where we allow it to be used again uh, to frighten people into uh, submitting to all kinds of mandates. I don't think we're going to do that once again. I don't think the American people are going to accept that, quite frankly. Yeah. No, you're right. I've been, I've been calling it uh, the midterms variant coming up because now all of a sudden we've got all of these new emergencies. Uh, what do you think about monkeypox? The U.N. Uh, health agency head is declaring a mon monkeypox global emergency right now. And we know that there's also been a case of polio found in New York. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts, Dr. Carson, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Uh, about about medicine as a doctor. I know that you're very involved still in the medical community. I want to get your take on monkeypox, polio, and also get your take on what else you have to share about the other things that you're working on right now. Well, the epicenter of monkeypox, of course, is uh, Europe right now. And, uh, you know, the, the problem is no one knows how concerned to be about things, given the misinformation that came out of our CDC and uh, all of our other medical facilities. And so it's going to be very hard to convince people that this is something that's very serious. And I'm, it's not clear to me that it's going to be that serious. Obviously, the ways that it's transmitted are a little bit unique. And uh, those things have to be looked at as well. Uh, in, in terms of uh, medicine in general, uh, one of the areas that I've been quite interested in lately is uh, fatty uh, liver infiltration, and which can lead to cirrhosis, which is a particular problem in certain uh, ethnic groups, particularly Hispanics. And, uh, you know, we need to really be paying attention right now to some of the therapeutics. There's uh, some small uh, therapeutic companies like Galactin Therapeutics in Georgia uh, working on ways to uh, ameliorate the effects of this. But this is a big problem. It affects tens of millions of Americans. And uh, we need to really focus some attention on it. Uh, Dr. Carson, do we know why uh, liver disease is so prevalent among the Latino communities? Uh, it's, it's genetically oriented. They have a predisposition okay. to it. Uh, just like, you know, African Americans have a predisposition to uh, certain types of things. Uh, Ashkenazi okay. Jews have a predisposition to certain things they do for that. Dr. Carson, it's so great to see you. Thanks for all of the work that you continue to do and contribute to this great country. We so appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Maria.